Um, hello. So, for today, we're going to discuss vectors and vector operations. So, recall types of vectors. A vector is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So, in a three-dimensional space, R3, it is an ordered triple of real numbers. So, we represent a vector by vector V, which is equal to ABC, uh, where the real numbers ABC are called the components of the vector V. So, we can say that the two vectors are equal if and only if their corresponding components are equal. That is, the vector V sub 1 is equal to the vector V sub 2 if and only if A sub 1 is equal to A sub 2, B sub 1 is equal to B sub 2, and then C sub 1 is equal to C sub 2. So, uh, the notation vector V, which is equal to ABC, is called the position representation of the vector when the initial point of a directed line starts from the origin in R3, which is 0, 0, 0, and ends at the terminal point ABC. So generally, we can connect two points, uh, say from P to Q, by subtracting each of their corresponding components. So we have here the vector PQ, which is equal to x sub 2 minus x sub 1, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and the z sub 2 minus z sub 1. So in R3, the zero vector has all of its components equal to zero. And that is the vector V is equal to zero, zero, zero. If one component of a vector is zero, then the vector lies in a coordinate plane. So for example, if the third component is zero, then the vector is on the xy plane. So we can simply write uh, this vector, which is equal to a, b, zero, as vector v, which is equal to a, b. Uh, here we have the magnitude. So the magnitude or norm of a vector is given by the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of vector v. And then, for any vector v in R3, the following are always true. Uh, the magnitude of the vector v is greater than or equal to zero, and the magnitude of the vector v is equal to zero if and only if the vector is the zero vector. Uh, if the magnitude of the vector v is equal to one, then the vector v is the unit vector, or is a unit vector. So we can uh, perform normalization to obtain a unit vector uh, given a non-zero vector. So we have here the vector v over the magnitude of the vector v. So in R3, uh, the standard basis vectors are the three unit vectors i hat, which is equal to 1, 0, 0, j hat, which, which is equal to 0, 1, 0, and then k hat, which is equal to 0, 0, 1. So it is called the standard basis vector because uh, these uh, three unit vectors are linearly independent into each other, and then we can express any vector for, say, vector v as a linear combination of the three unit vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat. We have here direction angles. So the direction of a vector is determined through its direction angles, which are the least non-negative angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, that the position representation makes with the positive x, y, and z axis. So here, alpha, beta, and gamma is in 0, pi, inclusive. Now, if the vector v equals to abc, then the direction cosines are as follows. So we have here cosine alpha, is equal to a over the magnitude of vector v cosine beta is equal to b over the magnitude of vector v and cosine gamma, which is equal to c over the magnitude of vector v. Uh, note that cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma is equal to 1. So this one can be easily uh, proved by squaring uh, these uh, expressions here, then adding them up, which is uh, equal to 1. Uh, here we have vector operations. So vector addition and subtraction. So let the vector A be equal to A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, and vector B equal to B sub 1, B sub 2, B sub 3, B vectors in R3. So we define the operations below. So the sum and difference of two vectors is equal to the sum and difference of their corresponding components. The scalar and multiplication here. So let the vector A is equal to a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, be a vector in R3, and let a C a constant. So we define a scalar multiplication below. So the scalar multiplication C times the vector A is equal to C a sub 1, a C a sub 2, and C a sub 3. Note that we have the following facts. So the, for the first one, we have the magnitude of the scalar multiplication C times the vector A 
is equal to the absolute value of C times the magnitude of the vector A. Uh, if C is greater than 0, then the scalar multiplication C times the vector A has the same direction as the vector A, while if C is less than 0, then it has the opposite direction as the vector A. If C is equal to 0, then the product is the 0 vector. And then lastly, we have two non-zero vectors, V sub 1 and V sub 2, are parallel if and only if um, the second vector can be expressed as the scalar multiplication of the first vector and some non-zero constant C. Okay, so for problem 1, we have let P be equal to 4, negative 2, 9, and Q be equal to negative 3, 4, and negative 12. So for A, we have to find 2 times the vector P plus Q. And for B, we have to let the answer in A be vector x. If the vector y is equal to the scalar multiplication C times vector x and y, or the vector y is equal to negative 25, 0, and negative 30, then what is C? Okay, so for A, uh, we first uh, solve this 2 times the vector P, and then the resulting vector's components should be added to the corresponding components in vector Q. So we have here 2. Solve muna natin kung 2p. So we have here 2 times the first component, which is 4. So we have here 2 times 4. And then we have 2 times negative 2, which is this one, 2 times negative 2. And then we have 2 times 9, which is this one, 2 times 9. And then add natin yung resulting components nun to vector q. So we have 2 times 4 plus negative 3, this one. And we have 2 times negative 2 plus 4, which is this one. And then we have this one, 2 times 9 plus negative 12. And then simplify this one, we have 8 minus 3, negative 4 plus 4, and then 18 minus 12. Uh, therefore, we should get 5, 0, 6. Okay. So for the second uh, item, we have uh, the solution here is uh, to compare uh, the vector x and the vector y and inspect what certain constant should be multiplied to the vector x in order to have the vector y. So. Uh, the following. And then, uh, by inspection, we have here 5c. So c times 5 should be equal to negative 25. And as a result, we have c is equal to negative 5. For the second component, uh, we can have any information by that since 0 is equal to 0. And then for the third component, we have c times 6, uh, 6c, is equal to negative 30. And as a result, we have c is equal to negative 5. And therefore, we must have C is equal to negative 5. Okay, so for problem number 2, we have let the vector B be equal to i hat plus 3j hat minus 2k hat. And for A, we have to find the magnitude of vector V. And for B, we have to find the terminal point of vector V when its initial point is at negative 2, negative 1, and 4. So for A, the given vector V is expressed in terms of the three standard basis vectors. So we rewrite it into its position representation form for easier analysis. So for that, uh, tanggalin lang natin yung i hat, j hat, and k hat. And yeah, we have 1, 3, and negative 2. And to find the norm, we have square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So we have square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. And therefore, we should get square root of 14. Okay, for b, we have to find the terminal point of uh, the vector v when its initial point is at negative 2, negative 1, 4. So, kanina we have, uh, we have the vector v be represented by a directed line from its initial point p to a terminal point p. Uh, that is, vector v is equal to x sub 2 minus x sub 1, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and then z sub 2 minus z sub 1. Uh, and our vector v is already given. We have 1, 3, negative 2. And our initial point p is negative 2, negative 1, 4. And therefore, we should have this one. And uh, solve natin individually what are the values of x sub 2, y sub 2, and then c sub 2. Okay. So, as a result, we have x sub 2 is equal to negative 1, y sub 2 is equal to 2, and then z sub 2 is equal to 2. And therefore, the terminal point of the vector v uh, is equal to negative 1, 2, and 2. Okay. So for problem number three, we have let the vector A be equal to 2, 2, and negative 4, and vector B be equal to 3, 4, negative 3. So for A, we have to find the direction cosines of the vector A 
and show that the sum of their squares is 1. Uh, for B, we have to find the unit vector in the direction of 2 times the vector A minus 3 times the vector B. Uh, so for the first one, we need to determine the norm first. Okay. So the norm is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 4 squared. Okay. Uh, we should get square root of 24 or 2 square root of 6. Okay. And then we can solve the name direction post direction cosine. So we have here cosine alpha is equal to a over the magnitude of the vector a. Cosine beta is equal to b over the magnitude of vector a. And then cosine gamma is equal to c over the magnitude of vector a. So we have the following. So we have 2. So yun 2 is the first component. So 2 over pinakuha nating magnitude which is 2 square root of 6. Um, and then we have cancel natin yung 2. We have 1 over square root of 6. And then, multiply tayo ng, well, ano tito? Multiply tayo ng square root of 6 over square root of 6. And ma, uh, magiging 6 sa baba. 6, square root of 6 times square root of 6 is 6. And then, square root of 6 times 1 is equal to square root of 6. And therefore, we have cosine alpha, which is square root of 6 over 6. For cosine beta, we have uh, the same component, which is 2. And then, same din naman yung um, solution. So we have cosine beta is equal to square root of 6 over 6. For cosine gamma, we have negative 4 as its third component. And then 2 square root of 6 as the magnitude. And ma-cancel to negative 4 and 2. Matitira is negative 2 over square root of 6. So multiply tayo ng square root of 6 over square root of 6 here. And therefore, we should get uh, negative 2 square root of 6 over 6. And ma-cancel ulit to. Um, we have... Negative square root of 6 over 3. Okay. And we show that our direction cosine satisfy the equation. So, substitute lang natin yung nakuha natin cosine alpha, beta, and gamma. And we have the following. So, square root of 6 over 6 squared is 6 over 36. Same as this one. Then, negative square root of 6 over 3 is 6 over 9. And we have to make 6 over 9 as a similar fraction to this two. So we have the following. 6 plus 6 plus 24 is 36. So the result follows. Okay. The result follows. And then for problem 3B, we have find the unit vector in the direction of 2 times the vector A minus 3 times the vector B. So evaluate mana natin ex expression. So we have 2 times vector A is equal to 2 times 2. We have here 2 times 2. 2. I'll annotate para. Um, 2 times 2 is this one. 2 times 2 is this one. And then 2 times negative 4 is this one. And then we have 3 times b. So this one. 3 times 4 is this one. So 4 to. Oh. This one is 4. Okay. So 3 times 4. And then 3 times negative 3 is this one. And simplifying this one, we have the following. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 times 3, 9 for the first component. For the second one, we have 2 times 2, 4, minus 3 times 4 is 12. And then for the last one, we have 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8, and then 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. And therefore, we should get negative 5, negative 8, and 1. So, let natin yung vector, the, the yield vector here as vector v. So, normalize natin uh, this vector by the formula below. So we have the vector v over the magnitude of vector v. So solving for the norm, we have square root of negative 5 squared plus negative 8 squared plus 1 squared. Um, we should get square root of 90. Okay. And then solve natin yung unit vector. Um, so for this one, we have to rationalize in the denominator and we should get square root of 90 over 90. And this is a scalar multiplication and we should have the following. So, negative 5 times square root of 90 over 90, negative 8 times square root of 90 over 90, and then 1 times square root of 90 over 90. And, ah, uh, makakansal na ito. Wait lang. Okay, so. Okay, for this one, ah, uh, makakansal tong 5 and 90, and we should get negative square root of 90 over 18. Ah, uh, this one, we have negative square root Negative 4, square root of 90 over 45. And for the last one, we have square root of 90 over 90. And 
d square root of 90 over 90 should be equal to 3 square root of 10. Um, yeah, for this one, we have 4 times 3 square root of 10. And for this one, we have 3 square root of 10. And then, uh, mga cancel yung 3 dito. Uh, yung 3, this one, and then same as this one. And therefore, we should get the following. Okay, so we have negative square root of 10 over 6, uh, negative 4 square root of 10 over 15, and last, we have square root of 10 over 30.